Uh, my name is Jesse Riding. I'm going to be tying a pattern called the Gorilla Stone, designed by uh, Rainy Riding. Um, this uh, this uh, pattern actually uses a uh, a 3x long shank hook. In this uh, in this case, we're going to use a size six, and it uses uh, a product sold by Rainy's called a Gorilla Body. This uh, Gorilla Body comes in a variety of different uh, different types of segments. This is a five segmented body. It comes in four segments. Um, and it comes in different color combinations uh, that are uh, particular to whatever you're going to be tying. In this case, this is a, a stonefly body and it comes in different colors and shades of browns, oranges, tans, and, and blacks. I prefer this combination because uh, I like the stoneflies that actually have more of a brown bottom to them. And we're going to create some thread segments there um, that uh, uh, will act uh, as the, uh, the orange bars that are on a, on a real stonefly. It's already shaped like a nice bug body. Now this fly actually involves a lot of prep work, and uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our size 6 hook in, in the vise. And one of the bad things about uh, different types of Chernobyl type bodies or uh, stonefly patterns or any uh, terrestrial type patterns that you may uh, put on uh, on a shank is that they'll spin very easily. And you can optimize that by doing a few tricks. The first thing that I, that I do is I take a simple file and I just rough that, that shank up like so. And I do it at all different angles. I do it on the bottom and I just do that. So when, the th when I wrap that with a thread base, it just wants to grip into that and I take that nice slick finish off. That's why the, it spins so easily is because hooks have a nice metal finish on them and the thread will just slide around on it. And so that's going to help with the combination between that and some glue. We're going to actually make sure that this Chernobyl ant does, or this, uh, this body doesn't spin on the hook. Um, we first need to put a, uh, a thread base on there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put some 3 out thread on and make a thread base. I'm actually using for this fly GSP thread, which actually does not cut with normal scissors. So I use a razor blade for most of my trimming, as you'll see, because that's the only thing that it takes to actually get a, uh, a cut on this thread. So once I've wrapped that down tight, I'm going to come back with more of a cross. And that's going to help that glue to stick in various cavities and then simply just tie off. Get that razor blade again, trim that off. Now one thing that I don't like about a lot of Chernobyl ants or, or flies that are tied this way is, is usually you take a body like this, whether you've bought or purchased a, a pre-shaped one or you've cut it yourself, and they set it right on top of the shank and they start tying with it. And what that does is it leaves the look of the thread wrap shank on the bottom of, of, the, of, the, of the fly. And that's one thing I've never liked. I've always liked a body that's, that, that's the way I want it, not necessarily having a line through the bottom of it. And so what, what uh, uh, kind of a trick way to do it in the way that this fly is, has been designed and tied is to hide that, that thread or that, that shank of that hook within the, the body itself and leave the bottom completely brown like, like uh, you want to, and we're going to make some, some thread wraps on there. So the way to do that is, is to simply make a slice in the top of it so that, in a sense, you're putting this on like so. And I'll show you how that's to be done. And the first thing I do is I go back to my uh, razor blade. Now, I'm going to want the eye of the hook to come out about here and the, 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 the bend of the hook to come out there. So simply put, the two segments are a good idea of where uh, I'm going to make those slices. So I'm going to put the, the body down and just right in the center of that. I'm going to make a cut, a slice, and I'm going to go down pretty good. In this case, you're going to be coming up with a body, and so you want the, the, the slice to be relatively deep so that it, um, it uh, gives you, maximizes your hook gap. And once I've done that and I can test it by opening it up and making sure it's deep enough, I'm going to use a bodkin and I'm going to, essentially we're going to put this on, on the hook, but uh, in order to, to uh, make sure I have the exit holes already done and I don't have to rip through it with the actual hook or the eye of the hook, I'm actually going to take the bodkin and shove it right through and then I'm going to wiggle it around to kind of stretch that foam a little bit. That's exactly where the hook shanks, uh, the band and the point's going to come out of. And then I'm going to go at an angle towards the eye and make the spot down in that, that groove where the eye of the hook is going to come out of. And wiggle that around. Then I'm going to take the hook out of the vise. 
And this can be done by just taking the point of the hook and you're going to run it right down through that spot that you just created. And as you can see, as you wiggle it down, you've now created this, this spot where you can take the shank, take it down through that slice that you created. And you're going to push that eye. Sometimes you'll have to use some finagling to get that down through there. There we go, finally through. Okay, once that's through, you can put it back in your vise. And you can see it's shaped a lot like a, like a drift boat. So you can start stretching that and sliding that back and forth on that shank. And then it's inside the slice there. And we'll just make sure that body's exactly where we want those segments and the eye comes out right where we want it. And we're gonna go back to our, our thread where we're going to now uh, super glue that, that slice shut. Again, gel super glue helps to uh, cure. So it's really good with foam. And I'm going to use the gel super glue to put down in there. When we cut off the oxygen, some oxygen supply, which I'll show you in one second, I'm going to use a bodkin to spread that out just a little bit better down in that hole. Make sure that it secures to it. When we cut off the oxygen supply to gel super glue, it cures instantly. And our first segment is going to, uh, we're going to put a, a thread band in each segment using the same gel spun thread. I like gel spun because you can compress it without it breaking. If you put the same pressure uh, that you can with gel spun on a regular thread, it will break. So it, it makes it kind of difficult, but I, that's what I enjoy uh, gel spun for. Trim it off with a razor blade. I'm going to make a nice thread band here so it shows up on the belly really nice. So I'm going to make it nice and prominent and thick. This is going to help to secure it to the thread, to the, uh, the, the, the shank of the hook. And um, at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and make some loose wraps around that body to hold that seam together so that that glue dries. And just give it a second. Um, There'll be some lines that are created on the foam, but they will come right out momentarily after the, the thread comes out. So after a few seconds there, I'm going to look and make sure that there's no excess. If there's excess, you can take your bodkin and simply just come in here and wipe off any excess so you don't get it on your fingers. Your fingers can get stuck together really easily. Um, you can also get uh, super glue on your fingertips and you, it, it becomes a layer that's dry. And the best way to do that is simply take an emery board and just file it off back down to your, to your regular skin. Um, once that's been there for about 10 seconds, I'm just going to unwrap it. Wind my thread back on the bobbin. Let that go. And I'm just going to finish this segment here. And I'm going to tie off again. I use a hand whip finish to do it. You could use a Mattarelli. Again, I don't want to, I, I wanted to hide the, the shank of my, of my hook. I also don't want thread wraps from segment to segment. So the way to do that is simply just to tie these thread bands on and off. So you don't have any uh, connection between the two of them. And it makes a nice finished fly. Trim off the excess. Make a nice thread band, pull it tight. Look at the belly, make sure it's good and make sure each segment has the, the same amount of thread uh, body in it as well. Once that's done, just tie off a couple. off. We're under our third segment here. This one will have four segments. In the third segment, we're actually going to, that's where we're going to tie in the, uh, the rubber legs. Stoneflies uh, definitely have legs and this will create motion. Look at my belly. Looks like I've got a little bit of a wild thread there. I'll trim off. Make sure my segments all look similar to each other. Before I uh, make that one too thick like the other ones, because we're going to have a lot of thread wraps with where the rubber legs are, um, I'm going to use round, brown, medium-sized rubber legs. 
and um, I really like having long legs on this fly. I'm only going to put one or two on each each side, and so I'm going to put some really long ones there. I simply just put two there. Make sure it's coming right off the side of the, the body. The gorilla body itself will help to stabilize your legs and keep them on one side or the other and flat because it has some dimension to it. In order to save a thread wrap as well as to hold it without having to hold it while you do that first wrap, I always go under the vise to tie legs that go away from me. And then once you're done that, just come in here with the hand whip finish again and tie up that body segment. You have to dodge some rubber legs on your way up and down, but it can be done really easily. Tie off that. Come in here with that razor blade and trim off the thread without cutting anything else. Okay, now we're in our last segment, and this is actually where we're going to tie in the underwing and the overwing. I'm going to come in here and tie that last segment on. Excess here. Hold back those rubber legs. Make sure my belly looks good. Now the uh, the underwing. Um, you know, I wanted to want to create. Uh, two things here. I, so on this fly, we're going to put an underwing and an overwing. The underwing is going to be made out of uh, pearlescent wing material, and we sell this. But you can get there's various products on the market that that, is li that are like this. I want to make sure I have the right length. If I tie it in here, I want it to come out a little bit. So the way to do this is to simply measure it with how long it needs to be, and use that as your guide. Trim off the exact piece that that's done. And then just like in grade school, how you would make paper hearts, you just fold that in half. And you can make a nice stone fly wing by making kind of the shape of a heart. So I fold that in half, and I start at the top of what we call the heart. And I just make a, a little round loop, but I'm going to make it very narrow. And then I know it needs to be pretty long, and I'm going to come down and trim it like that. And as we open this up, we'll see that it makes stone flies have a double wing. And that is going to create a kind of a nice double wing. We can put it on. And see if it looks good. To me, this looks kind of large still, so simply just put it back in its folded form and just trim it down just a little bit. This would be like a size two and or a size four wing, and we're gonna tie something less. And it, it also looked a little long, so I'm just gonna cut it down so we don't have so much bulk. That made it, I think, did the trick. We're going to lay that so it comes off. The fish will be able to see it through. And we're going to simply just secure that to that last segment there. And um, this can slide out really easily. So again, a trick is you fold that excess piece back and wrap it. And what you did is just create a loop. So if you pull this, it actually has to come all the way under those wraps and out again. It just makes it far, a, a far tighter uh, uh, wrap there. And if there was still excess, we'd trim it off, but that was just a little nub, so it's just totally fine. Now the overwing uses um, uh, elk hair. In this, in this case, this is kind of a, a dark natural elk, so this would be a cow elk, a piece of cow elk. That's uh, pretty particular depending on the type of flies you're, you're tying. In this case, I like to use a natural dark uh, uh, colored uh, elk uh, to do that. So um, what I do is I have a large hair stacker here. And uh, I like quite a bit up here. Uh, it helps with visibility and everything. So there's under fur in any hair that you do. And so I have another comb that I use. This is another type of mustache comb. Or it looks like my daughter's Barbie comb. So if you, you can steal it without her noticing, you could use that as well. So I comb out the under, under, fair, under hair, as you can see there. And then I'll put it in the stacker. Stack all the tips together. Tip it on its side. Take it off carefully. You can grip that bunch of hair. And some hair is going to be shorter than others, and you just want to make sure those tips are all lined up. 
Sometimes the hair has been broken off or whatever, and there's also some short hair in here that once we tie on there, it'll just come right out. Anyways, I'm gonna lay this right on the fly, and I want it to come off about the same length as that pearl wing material. And so I just switch hands after I've done that, and that's right where my secure wrap's gonna go to hold that on. As you can see, as you, you'll pull up, that hair will start combing up a little bit, and that's fine. And you can even keep wrapping in the various areas. And just make sure you get some good wraps to secure that on. And then as you can see, I'm gonna actually squeeze and pull out the excess that was too short to be covered by the, uh, uh, the thread wraps. At this point, we're pretty much done with the fly. We just need to trim all that off. So I'm, right now I'm gonna to try to separate the excess and just come in here and trim that down short. Trim the vise here. That's pretty much it. I'm going to put one, a couple more thread wraps in there tight, and then I'm actually going to lift it up and wrap to the eye and finish the fly at the eye with a whip finish. Trim off with a razor blade. I'm going to make sure all of this wing is splayed right. You can actually pull it up and shape it right. Uh, stoneflies, as they uh, enter the water column, they kind of flutter, and so having this come out to the sides and everything actually helps to make the fly more realistic as this is on the water. At this point, I'll use some nice utility scissors to trim off. I prefer the front legs to be shorter than the rear legs, so, but I can hold them together and trim them off to the right size length that I want. And then one more thing to make this fly perfect, and that is um, right here we left a lot of elk hair um, uh, open and it's kind of an open cell and kind of hollow and so we're, what we're going to want to do is seal that, that hair and I prefer to use Dave's Flex Cement to do that. And I simply just take my bodkin, flex cement, it's relatively thick, relatively viscous, get a drop on it, and just comb that in there so that those ends are all sealed up. We don't want them full, filling full of water and making the fly heavier than it needs to be. This is also a spot where you can put in a strike indicator if you have a hard time seeing flies, but I found with this large elk coming up, yeah, it's really easy to see in the water and it's a huge fly as it is. And that is the uh, Rainey's Gorilla Stonefly.